The job application process in Australia for overseas doctors can be very frustrating at times. One part that can be particularly frustrating is applying for lots and lots and lots of jobs and not getting any feedback at all. So in this video, I'm going to show you one quick tip that will both improve your success rate as well as reduce the number of applications that you actually need to submit. This tip might surprise you as it's kind of counterintuitive. Hi there, I'm Dr. Anthony Llewellyn, also known as The Career Doctor. I'm a real doctor from Australia who's basically a medical HR geek, and I'm here to help you with your medical career process. So the topic of today's video is one quick tip to improve your doctor job application success rate. And this tip is specifically targeted at international medical graduates who may be trying to land their first job here in Australia. Now, before I get into this tip, I wanted to remind you that I do have some free courses on my website for international doctors. So if you're a specialist IMG, I recommend you click on the link for my specialist pathway course. And if you're any sort of doctor from the United Kingdom, Ireland, US or Canada, then you should definitely enroll in my free competent authority pathway course. These courses will also help you better understand the process of becoming a doctor in Australia. So I'll leave links to both of these courses in the description for you below. I speak to lots of international doctors and one thing they often comment to me about is the number of applications that you have to put in just to get a call for an interview here in Australia. In fact, in a previous video, yeah, I spoke with Naj who put in 37 job applications before being successful. And I certainly know of some doctors who put in many more applications. And what can be particularly frustrating is that maybe nine times out of 10, maybe more, you put in a job application and you don't even hear anything back. So here's a tip for you to reduce your frustration about the process and to improve on your success rate. My tip is actually to apply for less jobs. Now, I warned you at the outset that this tip might sound a bit strange initially, but hear me out. So I'm here on my desktop and we're gonna have a look at a few jobs that I've downloaded recently. So here I am on the internet. I've just randomly pulled up some job descriptions from the New South Wales Health uh, Junior Medical Officer e Recruitment Portal. And I just wanted to show you something. So this is a job for a basic physician trainee. And if we scroll sorry, down to the bottom, we'll find the selection of criteria. You always find them at the bottom here in New South Wales. And you'll see our first criteria, medical well, Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery or equivalent current general registration with the Medical Board of Australia. And you really don't need to go past that. What does that mean? That means that you have to already be registered with the Medical Board of Australia. Remember, as an IMG, you know, an international doctor, you can't register for your first, well, you can't register in Australia unless you've got your first job in medicine and an offer. The Medical Board needs to check that the supervision requirements are okay. So that is saying that they are not accepting applications from international doctors. So here's another one for a surgical position, Surgical Skills Training Network in Sydney. Again, scroll down. Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery or equivalent currently registered with Medical Board of Australia. Same thing. Uh, another one, Northern Sydney in Obstetrics and Gynecology. Bachelor of Medicine or equivalent currently registered with the Medical Board of Australia. And then finally one uh, in emergency medicine at Bankstown, again in Sydney, resident medical officer or registrar, Bachelor of Medicine or surgery or equivalent current general registration. So they're all jobs that really isn't worth your while putting an application in for because you'll be applying for lots of them like that. And look, maybe one chance in a couple of hundred, they kind of overlook it or suddenly they get desperate and they want to take someone, but you're not going to get a lot of yield and you won't get many responses from applying for those positions. Okay, here's one for obstetrics and gynecology, a senior resident medical officer. Uh, again, um, the Royal Hospital for Women uh, in Sydney. We scroll down the criteria. Bachelor of Medicine or Surgery or equivalent currently registered or eligible for registration with the Medical Board of Australia. So what's that? Eligible for registration. Okay, so this is the distinct difference. This, these are the words you need to be looking for in all job um, advertisements, basically across Australia wide, is eligible for registration. What that means is they'll offer you the job and then you can apply for your registration. You, you're eligible to apply if you've got the job offer, if that makes sense. Now you always need to go a little bit further because you'll see in this one, there are some other prerequisites like minimum 12 months postgraduate experience, with some experience in obstetrics and gynecology. So that might not be everyone. But that is one that you could, as an IMG, apply for. And here's another example. This is for psychiatry training. Psychiatry often is one of those areas where you will find positions. Uh, and this is kind of a bit of a giveaway. Unaccredited means 
generally the, it's a gap filler type job, uh, particularly in psychiatry. Uh, and so we skip down to the criteria. Now here, it's a bit interesting. Normally you see this medical degree at the top, but they've flipped it. Um, this actually looks like a job description I wrote once because we're using the CAMEDS framework. Uh, but at the bottom, we've got medical degree. So Bachelor of Medicine or equivalent currently registered or eligible for registration with the Medical Board of Australia. So again, this is one that you might be able to apply for. And I'm just going to show you one more, which demonstrates something as uh, interesting. So this is a job, again, for an unaccredited trainee, this time in the Tweed, which is on the New South Wales-Queensland border. Resident medical officer, um, I think it's a general job. I oh, know it's the emergency medicine, I should say. We skip down to the uh, selection criteria, medical degree here, Bachelor of Medicine or Surgery or equivalent, currently registered or eligible for registration with the Medical Board of Australia. But look at the next one. Significant experience, PGY4+, plus, so they want someone with at least four years experience. We won't get into whether that's a valid criteria to put across so uh, i'll get off my hobby horse in an australian emergency department or equivalent as defined by the amc competent authority pathway so what does that mean i'm basically saying they will accept an img who's had enough experience in emergency medicine from one of the other competent authority countries that's in the uk united kingdom ireland canada and the united states of america and you see this a fair bit i mean you you see this most often you will see eligible for registration a reasonable amount but more and more we're seeing eligible for registration with some attempt to distinguish competent authority country doctors from doctors from the standard pathway countries and so it's a bit of evidence that there is a preference for doctors from the uk ireland canada and the united states so there you go that's a key tip for reducing your frustration with the job application process in australia apply for fewer jobs but apply for the right jobs remember that key phrase eligible for registration. Now, a quick reminder about the free courses on my website. There's a free course for specialist international doctors, as well as one for doctors from the competent authority countries, which is Ireland, United Kingdom, Canada, and the United States of America. And also, if you are considering working via a medical recruitment company to get a job in Australia, I'd really appreciate it if you reached out to me first, as I'll be able to provide you with some guidance about your best options. And it might result in the recruitment company paying me a referral fee, which helps me to run this channel and the blog site and provide more free content to everyone. So I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.